So I know that, uh, you know, we're in the midst of chaos and mayhem going on around the country right now. Um, but I want to show you there is there are rays of hope. And um, it is possible that we can come out of this situation with uh, with some fixes, some some real changes that um, could make us all safer and make the country more equal and less vicious. So what you're going to see here, this is um, this is Michigan Sheriff Chris Swanson, and. You're going to see the video of him and how he handled protests and what he and his department did. Because this is very unique compared to what all the other police departments are doing around the country. Uh, so he's going to show you how adults can and should handle this situation. And then also you're going to see there's a video that Michael Tracy posted on Twitter. He went to one of these New Jersey protests and there was a... a there was a protester there who was very angry at people who were throwing bottles and throwing rocks at, I don't know if it was property or police or, or cars or, or what have you, but you're going to see both a protester who is trying to stay true to the nonviolence of the civil rights movement led by Martin Luther King and you're going to see a police officer who's basically the polar opposite of like Bull Connor, who's like the epitome of an evil police, uh, you know, an evil police officer, or I guess he was a sheriff as well. So anyway, let's take a look and then we'll discuss. Pastor Hawkins, I'm just going to tell you, we want to be with you all for real. So I took my helmet off and laid the batons down. I want to make this a parade, not a protest. Come on, come on. That's it. You got little ones here, you got dogs, so what's up? So listen, I'm just telling you, these cops love you. That cop over there hugs people, so you tell us what you need to do. What with us? 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 Let's walk with us. Let's walk with us. And I said it. That's what I'm trying to just let them know. They throwing bottles, y'all not going to start that. We're not here for that. We're not going to start that. We ain't here for that. Exactly. These niggas need to speak the fuck up. We're not here for that. These whole ass kids out here. We're not here for that. Y'all not from North. Shut the fuck up. If you was born here, you got a voice. Other than that, y'all not from North. Y'all not going to come here and destroy them. Where's everybody from? Don't let them throw bottles at. Come on now, you got people that live here. They don't care about nothing. See that looting? Oh, niggas looting. Who else you see running out there with all them lamps and shit? Come on now, stay woke. It's what they want. They want us to be the bad guys. So some people are gonna see that first video, and um, they're gonna make an argument that like we're being had we're being took we're being bamboozled and no that cop's not a good cop and you know he's trying to almost infiltrate and undermine these are arguments i've seen the protest because he said oh i don't want to make this protest i want to make it a parade so some people are interpreting that as like see he's got nefarious motives and he's not with you but if you watch the video, the video goes on and people are still, you know, they end up chanting um, Black Lives Matter and the cops are still marching with them and um, no justice, no peace. And so I think people are reading too much into that statement. I don't think him saying I want this to be a parade and not a protest. I don't think that's his way of saying I don't agree with what you're aiming at. And my question to people who look at that video of the police officer who joined with the protesters and says, you know, that that's not a good thing. My question to those people would be, okay, then what do you prefer they do? 
what do you prefer a police department does? Because I've seen, I just played the video for everybody of the endless barrage of police officers being authoritarian, initiating violence, using force in egregious circumstances. I just saw those videos, I just played those videos for you, and they're endless. And we're going to call it out when it happens. And this is why, like, Campaign Zero is so important. Because we need to have these reforms. We need to fix the system. But this situation is the best reaction, the best response, the best leadership I've ever seen. And it shows cops don't have to be authoritarian. Cops don't have to use violence willy-nilly against people and have a, a, a tribalism mindset and in-group, out-group mentality. They don't have to be like that. They could be like this. They could be like this. Now, if this cop or this department does something wrong, of course, I'll call it out and disagree with it. But these kinds of actions, if, if this isn't good enough, if this isn't something positive to you, then there's, no, there's nothing that's positive. That there, it's not possible to have a positive reaction. Just everything is bad by definition because the police do it and I don't like the police. That's what that mindset would be. That mindset would be there's nothing that you could do that they could do in order for me to say, okay, you handled that well. So, you know, if, if every police department across the country reacted like this, I think we'd be in a much different situation today. Now, there is a little bit of a paradox and a little bit of a catch-22 that we're going to get into later. There was some very detailed research into the civil rights movement, and the guy looked into what's the most effective for really getting positive change. And the answer is going to surprise you. It surprised me. But it's going to surprise you in a way that perhaps, you know, you're unprepared for. Because it really is a, a... It really is... There are some stunning findings in there. And again, this stuff is proven. This stuff is verifiable. This stuff is empirical. So we'll get to that. But um, if every... If every police department like acted like that across the country, I think there wouldn't be as much anger and hatred towards the police in the first place. And um, I just want to repeat it one more time because I always feel compelled in these segments to let everybody know what the, what the solutions are to end police brutality because I don't like it when people talk about this without bringing up solutions because then it's like, well, what's the point? Why are we even talking about it if we're not going to try to improve it, not going to try to fix it? And Campaign Zero nailed it. And broken windows policing, community oversight boards, limit use of force, independently investigate and prosecute the bad cops, community representation, body cameras on the police that they can't turn off, um, new training to, to prioritize de-escalation and for-profit policing, demilitarization of the cops, and fair police union contracts because the unions always bend over backwards to help even the worst cops. We want to end that. So uh, those are the solutions. Now, in terms of what the protester was saying there, you know, there's this argument that's been used by the media, it's mostly BS. The argument of like, oh, outside agitators are coming in and they're really the ones doing the bad things. And it's like, well, there's protests in like ev almost every major city across the country. To have an outside agitator, well, that makes no sense. Why wouldn't people just drive right to the protest that's happening closest to them and then they will by definition not be outsiders. But in the few instances where you do have people who are acting violent and who are not known in the area... This was a protester who was standing up and saying, no, don't feed into the, the stereotype of what they want us to be. Don't, if, if you use gratuitous violence, then you're immediately going to be painted as the bad guy. Because the media is not really that sympathetic to you in the first place. And the second you do something negative, all the coverage is going to be through the prism, through the filter of... We need law and order, and we need to be tough on crime, and we need to restore order. And so this protester was cognizant of the broader picture, the bigger picture, and said, don't feed into what they want us to be. They want us to be the bad guy. And so I think that these two videos are a little bit of a, a ray of hope in an otherwise very dark time, because cooler heads can prevail, and... 
we can get the kind of change that we need while also staying true to our moral principles. I've always hated arguments that were like, well, you know, you got to bend the rules a little bit. You got to go outside of your comfort zone. You got to maybe do some immoral and unethical things in order to get the positive change that we need. But I've always deeply believed in the argument that you are what you do. So if you believe in offensive violence, then there is no end to that. You believe in offensive violence. And you could justify and rationalize the worst kinds of actions and crimes because you've already bought into the framework of, well, since I'm a good guy, when I do it, it's okay. And that, that is the exact argument that you see from the worst people in history. Like, for example, the Bush administration. You know, they, they did offensive violence against countries that didn't attack us. And the argument was, and I think they truly believe this to one extent or another, well, but we're the good guys, so when we do it, we mean well, so it's okay. And it's like, no, you are what you do. And so you used offensive violence, you believe in offensive violence. That's immoral. That's unethical. That's wrong. That's bad. That's not good. And that's what you are. So I think we should always try to stay true to our, our moral principles and to our ethical positions, even when the going gets tough. And within that framework, still bring about positive change. And again, I will get to a story later. I'll give you, I'll give you the academic research on this, which will prove something that's surprising about what the best path is forward. But, um, you know, you want to say I'm naive. You want to say I'm a sucker for liking the response from that police officer. By all means. Call me a sucker. Call me naive. I really don't care. Um, but if every police department across the country acted like that, there'd be a lot less people in the hospital. And there wouldn't be <laughs> police brutality. There would be, you know, responsible leadership, and it would be cops acting like we all think they should act. Like we all think they should act. Now, compare this to, there was another, this was a crazy one. There was another instance of, Protesters chanting at police, take a knee, take a knee, take a knee. They were lined up. And the protesters were saying, take a knee, take a knee, take a knee. One officer, black officer, takes a knee. Whoever the sergeant was or whoever the person in command was, the highest ranking officer there, pulled the black officer out of line, berated him, and then told him to get back in line and stay standing up. See, those are the competing philosophies. Well, actually, <laughs> also... We've just seen rank offensive violence from cops that I just played in a compilation for you in a previous segment. So those are the two competing philosophies. You have the positive one who's like, yeah, I'll, I'll march with the protesters. And, you know, we love you and we're here with you. And, like, let's keep it peaceful and positive and, and let's do this thing. And by the way, it's not just me. You, again, you could say I'm a sucker or naive for thinking that this is a positive thing. But the protesters themselves were appreciating it. They were all happy about the fact that there wasn't going to be some sort of violent standoff with authoritarian, tyrannical thugs like there were in other places around the country. So, um, those are the mindsets. You have the gratuitous, asinine, offensive violence, or you have the person who's sympathetic to the protesters and is showing real leadership. So, that's positive, and the protesters who are, you know, staying true to some semblance of morality and rationality. Uh, I have nothing but unending respect for them for doing the hardest work imaginable, which is trying to bring about change while also never bending your own moral compass. 